Let's talk about cruises. Cruises are very popular. Um, many of you may have already been on a cruise. Uh, they're hassle-free. Uh, it's a floating resort. Anything you get in a hotel on land, you'll be able to get on a, on a uh, cruise ship at sea. Uh, convenient. Um, everything is there for you in the same uh, small area. Interest for all ages. Whether you're young or old, everybody loves going on a cruise. And most everything is including the price. A lot of things, some things aren't including the price, alcoholic beverages, uh, gratuities obviously, and we'll go over that a moment, um, later on, but um, most everything is included in the cost. Uh, some crew terms you need to know and add on to a cruise could be a shore excursion or airline tickets. Uh, category. Uh, cruise lines have their cabins in different categories. Some of them go from A to F, some of them go from 1 to 10. They categorize their different uh, cabins. When you call a cruise line, sometimes they'll offer you a guaranteed category. Uh, your crew, your uh, cabin guaranteed be in a certain category. Uh, but you may get upgraded. For example, if you book an inside cabin, you may get upgraded to an outside cabin. They won't tell you the cabin number at the time of reservation. They may not only tell you it at, uh, at check-in, when you check in for the cruise, or they may tell you it two weeks before departure. But you'll never be downgraded. You'll always be upgraded. For example, you may get, again, you may get an outside cabin upgraded to a balcony cabin. So if a cruise line ever offers you a guarantee, always try and take it because there's always a chance you can get more for your money. TBA or to be announced, to be advised. Again, when you don't know your cabin, basically it's TBA. Example of a couple of brochures. Again, uh, this is the Carnival uh, Carnival brochure and also the Royal Caribbean brochure. Um, some cruise atlases. Um, cruise atlases are reference brochures. Uh, they have the itineraries of the cruises in them. And maps showing the destinations and the ports of call the dates of sailings. Um, there's no pricing. You won't find any prices in uh, cruise atlases. In fact, you won't find prices in most cruise brochures. Again, the same reason uh, you won't find them in tour brochures. A lot of these brochures are printed uh, 18 months in advance. Uh, therefore, the prices do change a lot in that particular time. Also, so cruise lines do have sales. If they're trying to promote a certain cruise on a certain day, trying to get more people on it, they will uh, bring the prices down drastically. So you'll find a lot of cruise brochures don't have prices in at all. Uh, and you won't find deck plans in these particular cruise atlases, but you will find them in the main brochures. And some different cruise types. Uh, destination cruise, for example, uh, Eastern Caribbean, Western Caribbean, Mexican Riviera, Alaska, Mediterranean. These are all destination cruises. Uh, repositioning cruises. A lot of Panama Canal cruises are repositioning cruises. Uh, cruise lines have uh, ships in the Caribbean in the winter. They need to get them to Alaska in the summer and they go through the Panama Canal. Uh, these are called repositioning cruises. They're usually longer one-way cruises, sometimes 14, 21 days. Um, but you can get a good deal on these ones as they're one-way cruises. Um, and especially as a travel agent, uh, you can get some really good deals on repositioning cruises. Again, the spring and the fall is when they have these, when they go up to Alaska, uh, and when also on the way back, when they come back from Alaska, to reposition back to the Caribbean in the fall. You also find repositioning cruises from um, the Caribbean to Europe. A lot of cruise lines take their ships from the Caribbean in the winter to the Mediterranean in the summer, uh, and also in the reverse in the fall. So that's, that's also an example of a repositioning cruise. Um, theme cruises, uh, you'll, also, you'll find uh, jazz cruises, you'll find full foliage cruises. Um, some cruise lines will have baseball or football players on a particular cruise signing autographs to encourage people and fans uh, and clients to actually go on that particular cruise. Uh, some examples of some team cruises. Uh, sailing vessels, Windstar, Windjammer, these giant sailing ships, uh, go into some of the smaller ports. People like these uh, huge sailing vessels. And even they can even interact with the crew on some of these, where they can actually uh, do some of the, uh, the chores that the crew would actually do. Um, river cruises, Viking river cruises specialize in Europe and also uh, the Yangtze River in China. You also find river cruises in the United States, uh, Delta Queen, uh, Mississippi River and the Ohio River. Also, American Steamboat Company does the Columbia and Snake Rivers up in the Northwest. Uh, ferries, you'll find that ferries also do short cruises, especially in British Columbia and the uh, fjords up there and also in Norway to get into some of these smaller areas that you couldn't get into with these large cruise ships. Uh, yacht cruises, um, Star Clippers, as an example of a yacht cruise uh, company. 
Also, uh, the Moorings is another example of a company where you can charter a yacht. Uh, they specialize in the Caribbean. And finally, freighters. Uh, again, these aren't as popular as they used to be. Um, there were freighter ships that uh, do have passenger cabins on board, maybe only 10 or 12. And you're able to take these, for example, from San Francisco to Yokohama. Again, it does take a longer time. Um, you have a separate area uh, away from the cargo, obviously, and the crew, and you have your own dining room. But again, it does take a long time. And people don't have you know, a lot of time anymore to take these longer cruises, so they're not as popular as they used to be. And an example of some destination cruises. Here's the uh, NCL or Norwegian Cruise Lines Hawaii brochure. They have uh, ships based in Hawaii, Pride of Aloha, Pride of America too. Um, and there's um, the Holland America, South America cruises. Some sailing vessels. Again, these are the ones I was talking. You can interact with the crew and do some of the chores on the ship. Also, Windstar, which is owned by Holland America, um, have excellent uh, sailing ship cruises through the Caribbean and also through Europe, Mediterranean. Uh, Viking River Cruises. Again, they do China, the Yangtze River, and also uh, Rivers of Europe, an excellent company. And uh, Delta Queen, again, they specialize in the Mississippi and the Ohio Rivers. They have the Delta Queen, American Queen, and also the Mississippi Queen, all three of the big paddle wheel steamers. Some cruise markets. Again, mass market cruises, appeal to the masses, uh, young, old, middle-aged, Carnival, Royal Caribbean are two of the major mass market cruise lines. And then you come to your premium cruise lines, Oceania, Holland America, uh, Princess, Celebrity, example of some premium cruise lines. Some niche and adventure cruise lines, barging through America, there's river barge excursions. Uh, there's one called Clark Expeditions that does uh, ice breaking cruises to Antarctica, you get on the icebreaker and actually go through the ice in Antarctica. And there's one uh, in the Amazon there as well. An example of some luxury cruise lines, uh, Queen Mary 2, which is owned by Cunard, that's a luxury cruise line, uh, Silver Sea, Seaborne, Crystal Cruises, these are all luxury cruise lines. Cruise etiquette. Um, alcoholic beverage usually aren't included in the price of your cruise. You do have to pay extra for alcoholic beverages and also some non-alcoholic beverages aren't included. Um, some of the luxury cruise lines do include a stock uh, minibar in your cabin and also include wine with dinner, Regent Seven Seas, uh, Silver Sea are two of the cruise lines that have that. Attire and clothing, um, again they do have a couple of formal nights on some cruises. Some cruises don't, cruise lines don't have formal nights at all anymore. It's a lot more relaxed than it used to be. Um, also, dining. Um, it used to be that you had to go to first and second seating. Um, now a lot of cruise lines have something called freestyle dining, where you're able to eat whenever you want to. A lot of cruise ships have a buffet on the one of the decks, where you're able to eat uh, buffet style any time of the day or night. Uh, so you don't have to go and be set to a certain time of meal, certain time of day. And a lot of cruise lines also have um, specialty restaurants where you do pay a premium, but you have more intimate dining uh, experience in those particular restaurants. Embarkation and debarkation means getting on and getting off the ship. Entry requirements. Um, a passport is needed, obviously, for international travel. Even Canada and Mexico in the future will be needing a passport. Caribbean, you will be needing a passport to travel to. So I do suggest that everybody does get a passport. Uh, onboard credit charges, when you check in for a cruise, they will take your credit card and then you ha they give you a cruise line charge card to use for uh, use it, um, for sure excursions. Um, unfortunately, you can even now use it for gambling, uh, which can get some people into trouble, so beware of that. Um, again, sure excursions can be purchased through the cruise line. They're not commissionable, unfortunately, uh, and they do tend to be more expensive. I'm going to show you on the next page a couple of... Um, uh, companies that do sell shore excursions separately. Uh, so be aware of that. If you do buy shore excursions through the cruise line, they are not commissionable. A lot of ships uh, do have uh, specialized cabins for handicapped, and also some of them even have dialysis, dialysis machines on board. They also can uh, have special meal requests as long as you let them know in advance uh, what your client needs. Tendering. Uh, a lot of these larger uh, ships aren't able to get into some of these smaller, uh, shallow water ports. So they do have tenders that will take you on and off the ship, bring, take you off the ship and bring you back, and able to take in, uh, get you into the dock so you can visit these smaller ports that don't have the capacity to take a larger ship. 
And again, these usually run every 15 or 20 minutes. As I was saying before, there are sure excursion companies you can book uh, separately. They usually use the same operators that the uh, cruise lines use, uh, but they are usually less expensive and you also get paid commission. There's three of them here, sure trips, port promotion, and port trips. Be aware though, if you, that if you don't book uh, the sure excursion through the cruise line, uh, you book it, book it separately or you take a sure excursion by yourself through a local uh, vendor, uh, make sure you get back at the time uh, specified by the cruise line because if you don't, the cruise is going to leave without you. Obviously, if you book the sure excursion through the cruise line and it's uh, with one of their vendors, then the cruise ship will actually wait for you if for any reason the sure excursion is late. Uh, example of some cruise rates. Again, uh, not any particular cruise line. Just give you an example here. This particular cruise line has categories from 1 to 8. 1 being an inside cabin all the way up to category 8, which is a large suite. Be careful, category 1 is lower deck, upper and lower bed, which is bunk beds. So be aware of that. Again, they have peak season, which is high season, and value season, which is lower season. If you notice, the third or fourth person in the cabin pays the same price, doesn't matter what cabin they're in. If they're in a category 1 or a category 8, it's always going to be the same price for the third or fourth person, so it's usually a good deal. Port charges are sometimes included in the cost of the cruise, sometimes they're not. If they're not, the cruise line will tell you at the time of booking. This particular cruise has a $129 port charge, and again, they can be quite expensive, up to $200. The more ports you visit, the more port charges you pay. Cruise insurance, again, it's usually better to buy the insurance through the cruise line. They have negotiated rates with the particular insurance companies. So it's usually a better deal to actually buy the insurance, uh, insurance policy uh, through the cruise line directly. And again, prepaid gratuities. A lot of people like this nowadays. Um, it used to be that you went on a cruise and at the end of the cruise you had envelopes to put the gratuities in. A lot of people didn't want to mess with that. So now the uh, cruise line gives you an option to have the gratuities prepaid. Usually it's um, $10 per person per day. So on a seven-day cruise you'll be paying $70 each. Um, and the cruise line gives you the option to this here and have to mess around at the end of the cruise. They uh, proportion the gratuities out themselves. And finally, the single rate. Usually if you're a single person, you do pay 150%, sometimes 200% of the standard rate. One person occupying a cabin does pay uh, more than two people occupying or three or four people occupying.